Welcome to our lesson on solving quadratic inequalities. So in this lesson, I'm going to use sketch graphs to solve each of the inequalities in A, B and C. So to do this, I need to write question A as an equation with y is equal to x squared minus 5x plus 4. And now we can sketch the graph where we have a y and the x axis. So to sketch this graph, I need to work out the points where the line passes through the x-axis or the line y equals zero. And these points are called roots. So to find the roots, I'm going to write the equation where y equals zero. And now we can solve this by factorizing the right-hand side. So we can have x minus four and x minus one. Because we can see the negative one Multiply by the negative 4 makes a positive 4. And the negative 4 added to the negative 1 makes a negative 5x. So our solutions are when each bracket equals 0. So x minus 4 will equal 0. So x will equal 4. And x minus 1 will equal 0. So x will equal 1. So these two values of x are our roots, which we can plot when x is 1 and when x is 4. Clearly this is not perfectly to scale. And we can work out the intercept using x equals 0 and this will give us y is equal to 4. So we can plot this point about here. So our parabola, our sketch graph, will pass through these three points. And now we can use this to solve the inequality because it tells us here that it has to be less than zero, which is below the x-axis. So our solution is when x is less than four and greater than one. So this is our solution. Okay, let's move on to question B. So again, I'm going to write the inequality as an equation involving y. So y is equal 2x squared minus 11x minus 6. The roots will be when y equals 0. And now we can factorize the right hand side. So we have 0 is equal to 2x in one bracket and x in the other bracket because this will give us the 2x squared term. Now to work out the numbers here and here, we consider the factors of negative 6. So we have negative 1 and 6, negative 2 and 3, 1 and negative 6, and 2 and negative 3. Now one of these pairs will go in this position and the other in this position. And when we multiply this term out, we're doubling it. So if we double the negative 6, we get negative 12. And add it to the 1, we get negative 11. So the negative 6 will go here, and the positive 1 will go here. So our roots are when 2x plus 1 is equal to 0, so x is negative 1 half, and when x minus 6 is equal to 0, so x will equal 6. We'll show this on our sketch graph, so we have negative a half here, and 6 here. Our intercept, when x equals 0, y is equal to negative 6, so our intercept will be below the x-axis, so we can sketch our graph like this. And going back to the inequality, this is less than or equal to zero. So again, it's below the line, but also on the line, which is equal to zero. So we have x is less than six in this direction, and or equal to, and greater than or equal to negative one half, which is in this direction. Okay, let's move on to question C. So question C is a little bit more difficult to question A and B. So we're going to write this inequality with the right hand side equal to zero. So to do this, I'm going to take away the two and add five X to both sides. And then we can see these will make zero as well as these. So now we have y is equal to 3x squared 
plus 5x minus 2. We'll find the root when y equals 0. So we have 0 is equal, and we'll factorise. So 3x in one bracket and x in the other bracket. The numbers that multiply to make negative 2 are 1, negative 2, and negative 1 and positive 2. If we multiply the positive 2 by 3, we get 6. And then take away the 1 to make positive 5. So our roots are when x is equal to 1 third and x is equal to negative 2. Which we can sketch here and here. Our intercept will be at negative 2. So we can sketch our graph. And going back to our inequality, we can see this is greater than. So we're looking above the line now in this direction and in this direction. So we should be at negative 2 here. So our solutions are when x is greater than 1 third in this direction and when x is less than negative 2. Okay, let's try one final question. So here we have an exam style question on this topic. We have a sealed tin, which is a cylinder of height 18 centimeters and a base radius R. And we're told that the total surface area of a tin must be less than 80 pi. And we've been asked to work out a maximum value of R. Do you want to try and do this question yourself? You can pause the video and resume it when you're ready. So I'm going to begin by writing the total surface area in terms of R. And we know for a cylinder, we have the curved surface area with two equal circles to make the top and bottom. And we know the circle as an area of pi r squared. So to work out the area of a curved face, we know the circumference makes the length, which is 2 pi r. And the height is given as 18. So the total surface area is 2 pi r squared plus the, the curved face, which is 36 pi r. And we're told that this must be less than 80 pi centimeter squared. So next, we'll make the right hand side equal to zero by taking away 80 pi from both sides. So these will cancel. So now we have two pi r squared plus 36 pi r minus 80 pi will be less than zero. We'll factorize out the two and the pi from both sides. So now we have r squared plus 18 r minus 40, and this is less than zero. We can factorize the left hand side. So we have r plus 20, and r minus 2. So our solutions are when r is equal to negative 20 and r is equal to positive 2. So we'll sketch this graphically. So the radius has a root at 2 and negative 20 and the intercept will be negative 80 which will be down here somewhere. So we have parabola looking something like this. And we're told it must be less than zero, so it is below the line. So the maximum radius we can have is when r is less than 2. Okay, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you found that useful. Thanks again, and take care.